Hello, hello, Larson Halleck here. Let's talk about white privilege, namely, does it exist? I feel that the issue of privilege can be looked at from two angles, explicit and implicit. And in regards to explicit privilege, let us be blunt. There are zero explicit legal measures by which the blue-eyed devils have power over anybody in America today. There are no more gentlemen's agreements, redlining, Jim Crow, restrictive covenants, or anything like that. White Americans certainly don't conspire to keep down minorities with each other. I mean, that would be unseemly. Publicly, at least, everybody is virtue signaling like a Pharisee, with CEOs and college deans fighting tooth and nail to induct minorities into their organizations. One can argue about the sincerity of all this. White elites are rightfully mocked for being a bit hypocritical with their love of minorities. You ever notice how they all seem to end up living in 99% white communities? But I think it's fair to say that at least to some extent, they genuinely do want to help the poor benighted heathens, patronizing though that help may be. In addition, anybody with two functioning eyes can see that the media and culture of the West today are not particularly pro-Caucasian. There are constant articles railing about white privilege, white nationalism, those goddamn Beckys with nice hair, and so forth. It seems a little bit odd that a white supremacist nation like America allegedly is would allow daily admonishments from people of color. Better yet, if you want to disprove the notion of de jour white supremacy, look at the economic statistics. Yeah, look at this. Did you see how regular old Anglo-Americans are number seven in the richest demographics? It seems very odd to me that quote-unquote white supremacist America, spelled with three Ks, would set itself up to be seventh best. The crime statistics paint a similar picture. Caucasians get arrested more often than Asian Americans. And the idea that racist Americans would set up society to be in second place again doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But I don't want all the above to imply that minorities don't see that explicit white privilege doesn't exist. I mean, they'll never say it in public, but they understand it damn well. Look at how Hispanics and Arabs and subcontinental Indians once fought tooth and nail to be considered white. Now they fight tooth and nail to not be white, because there genuinely was white privilege in the past, but no longer. I mean, these are smart people, and they can see the writing on the wall. Being a white American is a disadvantage in many ways. Or to put it another way, how does it privilege white people to have their people's historical sins constantly talked about and other people's sins whitewashed or ignored entirely? Conversely, how are whites privileged when their people's historical achievements are ignored and or blackwashed? How does it privilege white people to be preemptively blamed for an anti-Muslim backlash that has never once happened after yet another Islamic terrorist attack? How privileged are white Americans when there are, again, at least seven minority groups that are on average wealthier and more successful than white Americans? How does it privilege white people to have several other ethnic groups be more educated than whites who are, again, the most privileged, quote-unquote? How are white Americans privileged when the three facts above are ignored entirely to hammer in the whites are privileged over some other ethnic group's narrative? How does it privilege white people to be the group most often victimized in interracial violence? How does it privilege white people to have this fact whitewashed and ignored? How does it privilege white people to have non-whites labeled as whites when they commit crimes but labeled as minorities when they're victimized in a deliberate attempt to inflate white crime rates? On that note, how are whites privileged when the media runs interference for the criminality of other groups while simultaneously slavishly hunting for the great white defendant? How are whites privileged when hate crimes against them are not labeled hate crimes? How are whites privileged by their governments openly being against them and desiring to elect a new people? How are whites privileged by the fact that there are fields of study seeking to debunk, decolonize, and destroy whites as a concept? How are whites privileged when mild concern over the talk of destroying the concept of whiteness gets brushed off and mocked? On that note, how are white people privileged when an innocuous statement like, it's okay to be white, starts a mass panic across the country? It seems to me that if whiteness were such a benefit in the easy mode of life, then the hard-fought gains of LULAC and other organizations to be legally considered white would want to be retained. But no, all of a sudden they want to be considered non-white. You know, why would they be making their life harder for themselves, allegedly? Perhaps it's just solidarity between the Rainbow Coalition. Or perhaps it's because they realize that being white in 2021 is in fact not so much of an advantage and they're jumping off a sinking ship. So as you can see, there are no explicit legal advantages and there are in fact several disadvantages. But with that being said, I do still think there is a very small grain of truth to the concept of white privilege. As I said before, there are no hard explicit laws whatsoever, but there are, I don't know, let's call them soft cultural assumptions or tropes that are remnants of a long-ago time of overt white supremacy, and they linger on in our collective cultural memory to this day. If there is any white privilege that exists today, it is entirely one of these. These are found in all kinds of media, and as a huge nerd, I feel again that I have a fair amount of knowledge on the subject of media and tropes. These tropes are not anything 
that anybody is doing deliberately. You know, as I always like to say, there is no evil cabal of white men wearing suits and smoking cigars deliberately thinking about these. But they come from century-old silent films and centuries-old literature, tropes that have traveled through the gestalt ether, and they still form our cultural understanding to this day. For example, the assumption that a tall white man is a better leader than others. There has certainly been no shortage of white men comes to a tribe and becomes the leader by virtue of being better than the natives at their own culture kind of stories over the centuries. And despite all the conscious efforts to subvert this idea in recent times, the fact that many movie stars and directors and producers and writers, not to mention consumers, are white people means this won't go away so easily. And yeah, I'm considering Jews white here, okay? I don't want to hear your purity bullshit. Similarly, many Fortune 500 CEOs and other business tycoons are white men, which leads to the unspoken idea that white man equals leader. And of course, we come to the big one, sexual desire. Namely, the idea that white people are better looking and more sexually attractive than other kinds of people. And OK Cupid data bears this out, especially for men. But not just any kind of white man, uh, more specifically the Chad Thundercock, captain of the football team, macho sort of white man. So sorry, lard ass no necks. Every woman of every race wants to sleep with the square-jawed, steely-eyed, white manly man. So here's a test for you. When you see somebody running out a long diatribe against white privilege, ask yourself if that person gets laid regularly and with high-quality partners, because I guarantee they don't. Whether it be frumpy and lumpy black women seething in rage at Becky with the good hair, or dumpy Asian manlets whining about the white men taking their women, I would wager that sexual rage makes up about 90% of complaining about white privilege when you get down to it. And of course, as I mentioned in my last Asian sex bullshit video, and we're not going over this again, people inherently realize that this is kind of silly sounding, so they try to gussy it up with other things. But I guarantee you, it's about sex when you get down to it. I, I already discussed this at length in the Asian sex bullshit video I did last. Go watch that again. Now, as I said in that video, I myself felt a lot of racial anger and resentment when I was young, and I noticed that they utterly melted away once I started getting laid on a regular basis. But I have the ability to walk in somebody else's shoes, and I can forgive those who are sexually frustrated for acting irrational. So what is to be done? Hmm, gee, I don't know. How about stop lecturing white people on how evil they are and then begging them to fix the problem? If you want to get rid of these cultural assumptions, I've said it before and I'll say it again, people of color need to stop whining and start making their own media make them popular and well-liked so people rethink their cultural biases. That is the only way you will accomplish anything and get rid of the few fragments of white privilege that actually exist. Because spending 23 hours of the day complaining about white people and then spending the 24th going, white people help, give me better movie roles, white people, is incredibly lazy, cowardly, and hypocritical. I'm Larson Halleck, deal with it. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hello, are you a fan of Larson Halleck and the Barbaric Gentleman? Of course you are, otherwise you wouldn't be watching. Would you like to help the channel grow? Here's how you can. You can go to Patreon.com and pledge some money, joining the ranks of the illustrious heroes you'll find at the end of the video. You can also go to PayPal.me slash Larson Halleck to give me some money. Or you can follow me on social media, at Larson Halleck on Twitter and Instagram. I don't use right-wing grifter sites like Gab and Parlor because they suck. You can also buy my books. The links to do so are in the video description. And of course, please subscribe and spread the word. That name again is Larson Halleck, and I hope you enjoyed the video.